the beam! Oh! Goggle eye right now! Oh! He caught him. <laughs> That's the most fun you have sitting down right there. <laughs> Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. So we try to head out, and uh, sometimes, you know, man, you just fall into fish, you know, and, that, and that's what happened. You know, we come under the bridge, there's 60, 70 freaking frigate birds, pelicans, and you name it, just it, everywhere. It's 7.30 in the morning and we're already licking our chops. You know, something, something cool is happening when that's going on. Yeah, and normally we try to get offshore, you know, and get out there and, and, and chase those fish that everybody likes to chase. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it was something we had to check out. And, and how cool is that to pull in there and literally see thousands of 15 pound Jack Cravals destroying the, the valley. The hapless valleys. I mean, how can you do what we do for a living and even consider driving by that? Oh! <laughs> My, oh, they're huge, too! <laughs> we had homes a couple hundred yards away from us. Uh -huh. um, Could have got the biggest fish ever on your favorite fishing pole. Any way you wanted to catch them. You mm -hmm. catch them on a fly, catch them on a plug. It's done! Poof! Head on him! Oh! Look, 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 look! Oh, in the dog! Oh! Oh, that's sick! You, you were throwing no hooks. Hook was just to get them just jacked to fire up. Them up. I didn't want to fight them for five minutes. I want to just get bite, 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 bite. And they actually held on. That, you know, <laughs> so you got no hooks. Uh -huh. the, the plug's coming across. They're eating the plug. There's so much competition. And if they don't eat on. that, five other ones are going to eat it. Right. Fifty other ones. Just behind the fish. Oh, as soon as it hits the water. Oh, my God. We got the whole herd. <laughs> I, just, I like watching, look, there's, there's no, <laughs> hey, there's, there's no, hook, right here, right here, no hooks in that at all. So they're just chasing it. You don't let those uh, Jack Cravals find out where your bait school is, because if they find your bait, yeah. it's gone. It's those, it's, for the season, it's, they don't leave until it's all eaten. They are eating machines, man, and I tell you, it, it's like, you know, somebody will say, hey, there's a big school of Ballyhoo over here on the reef, and da, 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 and then the next day it'll be, Oh yeah, the Jack Carvals found it. So you know that there's no bait there anymore. Stop going there. Um, but just an eating machine, pound per pound, cool fish. Uh, uh, great for somebody to catch as a novice, inshore, calm. Uh, we do find them offshore too, but uh, it was just really neat to see them in that four feet of water, clear as all get out. Uh, and, and so we had to stop. And, and, and I think you caught one on the fly rod. I caught a couple on the fly rod. Uh, maybe, you know, I uh, caught a bunch on the spinning rod. Mm -hmm. uh, a really cool way to start the morning. A little deeper here, Steve, it might work. I get my fly rod out. A little more. Oh, yeah. That's sick. Look at that, dude. It's yellow, but just like we were talking about. Where do you want me? Catch one, baby. Catch one. Where do you want me? Right there is good. All right. Boom. Boom. All right. Come on. All right. Ready? Get right on. Oh, my goodness. It's so important that every day my boat leaves a dock, there is a rig spinning rod with a lure on it, a topwater lure, okay? Next to that is a rig spinning rod with a jig on it, okay? Next to that is a rig spinning rod with a piece of wire, and next to that is a, is a spinning rod with just monofilament and a hook. So basically with those four rods being ready, I mean, I don't care if it's a cobia. Oh, what's that, cobia? You got a jig you can throw in right. to catch him. If you have to stop and tie on your jig and a, buck and a curly tail, it could be he's over. gone. That's the thing people don't realize is it's all in a moment. Mm -hmm. So you have to be ready with all different types of setup. And, and, and instead of you thinking, oh, I got to have all this crazy, no, it's four things. A topwater lure, a bucktail jig, a mono and a hook, and then a little, sh a little shot of wire and a hook. And, um, and you might success. go five trips in a row and never, ever use any of that stuff. But then that one time that one fish is tailing, and you can just grab that rod, throw that bucktail in front of that cobia, twitch it twice, and got him on. Or you take the pop and plug and in front of a mahi-mahi, pop it twice, and he comes roaring out of the wave. Very important to have those, those 
you know, at least four rods rigged and ready to go before you pull off the dock. Oh, you yeah! didn't jump out of water! Oh, oh my god, that was awesome! Oh. oh, he jumped on it! He thought that was a minnow. Oh, dude! Oh, they keep All right, dropping call, it! Call, call. I got him, I got him turned! <laughs> Guy. They're a little fish, but cool bite. <laughs> Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Mercury. By Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. And by Under Armour, Costa Sunglasses, and Key West. We got, what's going on here, Stevie boy? Am I going to be able to put a kite out? Is yeah, that going to run over? We're right in the middle of the commercial kingfish fleet. Well, hopefully we got a technique to catch the big ones, right? Yeah, we'll try to get a couple big ones going. What you got, Scott, is a bunch of guys pulling uh, planers and big spoons. Spoons? Yeah. No yeah. buck, no, nothing with feathers. Just no, the, no, 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 just big, big drone spoons. And these guys will circle around trying to catch these kingfish. And normally the fish are like 10. 15 pounds. And we'll come in here and we'll hang some big live baits and see if we can't pick a couple big ones up. Scott, what I enjoy most is when I'm fishing with you to watch you run that kite. I mean, that is your forte. I mean, you can make that thing go up and no wind, a lot of wind. You can bank it right, bank it left. And, and, and what I really learn is, is just to watch you and all the little tricks. I mean, the sinkers on the line. Uh, it's just a pleasure to see. Well, you know, we wanted to get a shot of a, one of these big 40 pounders jumping on a gog line. So we, we brought the kites down, and we, uh, we had plenty of wind to do it. We uh, actually had the perfect amount of wind to uh, use the average uh, kite, which is the F SFE brand. And we brought two. We, uh, we used two when we're sail fishing, which seriously, but at the end of the day, when the kingfish was going, two would have been just You couldn't much. keep up. Yeah, you couldn't keep up. And then when we got set up on the kings, we said, look at this. The current's going you know, up the rope. So what we did, we put the, uh, the, the banking, we used one, but we banked it so it stayed in our chum as most. As, right, as, so we're anchored. <laughs> the chum is not going straight back with the wind. The chum was actually veering over to the right. And what you did was you weighted that right corner of that kite. And so when you flew that kite, it banked over and was actually in the chum slick. That there alone is just a really, really neat trick that not a lot of people know about. Um, the basic thing with a kite that you know a lot of people probably don't understand is the whole principle behind it is it to get all the leader, all the line out of the water. Oh yeah. You get your bait right Absolutely. on the surface. So the kite's flying up, there's a clip. You run your line in the clip, you take it out. Now your bait is hanging straight from that clip. So when that fish is swimming around, when he looks up. I think we got some great shots of it. We could actually have just the bait, belly, tail, the hooks. I mean, we, we can see the hook above the water. So the fish can net, it's perfect presentation for a bait. And when, when you're doing that, we were trying to catch kings, but we could catch anything. Bait fish are, by nature, uh, you know, real spooky. They come up, they get comfortable. Any any movement, they race to the bottom. What happens to that one that gets stuck, left on the surface? He's got to get eaten. Oh! oh! Goggle eye right now! Oh! He caught him. <laughs> That's the most fun you have sitting down right there. <laughs> I know, just, yeah, just keep it real close and short. And... That's just as much fun. Yeah. Now, if we had him going like that, and we took it out of the water and threw a fly, what kind of fly would we have to use to get a king going? That same fly will work, bro. Well, I wish they'd be about 30 pounds heavier. It'd be awesome. But we take what they give us, Scott. You got it. I'm getting ready to punch another one in the hook. <laughs> I'm going to join you in just a second. And I can, I can use my spinning rod right now, but I want to do the same thing. I'm going to try a giant pilcher. And I, how's that for a pilcher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't make them bigger than that. <laughs> it's too fun to watch. I'm looking at you now. <laughs> I'm in the zone. Tail beat. Oh, there's airing out on freebies. <laughs> don't you not making enough noise or what? He ain't making any noise. Not, he don't, he's not doing that goggle eye dance, though. I'll show you a little freebie. That's right. Right in here next to you. I got him right on top with the tail working. 
Nothing's in the water but the bait, not even the hook. See his dorsal fin back there. Oh, there he is. He did not. You're not allowed to hook him unless he airs out. He came out of nowhere. <laughs> no. You gotta keep your eye on the ball. I love when they just stop swimming and shake their head. Little guy. They're little fish, but cool bite. <laughs> That's what we got going on here. Oh! Lose your bait already, Steve? No, I popped out a clip. Oh no, you get bit on the way. The streamers on this one yeah. still. They get real big, they lose those, you know? Uh huh. That's beautiful. Look at that, that color is just incredible. If that's Portuguese Man of War, I'd be screaming. <laughs> Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. By Simrad and the new NSS Sport Touchscreen Display. And by Marine Formula Stable, Isla Mirada, Tailwalker Charters, and Plano. Maybe you got a mutton then, crab eater. Oh, long <laughs> bait! He got some air. Come on. It's still there. Yeah. Oh! oh! Come again. That never gets old, man. Finish him! I don't care who you are. Oh, it is a big old mutton snapper. Yeah, baby. Not big, but big enough. <laughs> crab eater. Crabbies. That's why they taste so good. Oh, oh long bait. He's holding it when he landed. Spit it out again. There he goes. Get this old mutton snapper here. Oh, I get one more bite on him. One more bite. Got an old smorgasbord. <laughs> Fish. We're gonna. That's your favorite little outfit. Just quarter ounce, uncut. Yeah. Got him that time. Oh, pull up. You get him? Hold him off. Yeah, I bet you there's another one. That's dinner right there, Scotty. I'm just going to sit here and be it. I mean, he's... <laughs> Getting nervous. Those commercial guys are out there. Um, they're commercial king mackerel fishing. Um, they're not really looking for the big ones. They're just looking for the big school to do the numbers. Um, they're allowed to catch, I think it's like 1,250 pounds uh, right now, and then it'll go down to 500 pounds, and then they'll close it. So it's a short season. Um, there was probably 20 boats out there. These guys oh, yeah. are fishing hard. Um, you know, traditionally, when you hang a live bait, you tend to get the little bit bigger bites. Those guys just want bites. I mean, if they're five pounds, 10 pounds, it doesn't matter. Um, they're trying to get their weight. But still, by, just by nature, when we were uh, chumming hulls, pilchards, we did have kingfish air and out all around us. So every time a captain saw that, another boat came trolling the drones right on through. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> There's no courtesy for our slick. Oh! No. Did he miss him? He got... Cut? Nope. Tail. Oh, he's back at him. He's still got a tail beat. He's still moving. Oh, he's laying underneath him. <laughs> Gone. You put wire on there? No. No wire? No wire. Golly. He's got a little juice to him. Jack Carval. Looks like a Jack Carval. Shrimp eating Jack Carval. That's nice. Oh, an African. Beautiful it is an African. African pompano. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Well, Where did that come from? I called it, man. This most random call ever. Oh, he's beautiful. He's got streamers, he's got streamers yeah. little babe. Yeah, swing around. I got to swing around the other side. Yeah. 
Can you go under this? But what a great little fish those are. You know, when you catch the juveniles, yeah, they got those streamers on them. Kind of, and you caught two exact same ones. One had those beautiful streamers, another one didn't have them yet. Yeah, yeah. Either had them and lost them already or hadn't developed them. That's crazy. We, I don't catch them at size at all. We're off of Duck Key, we catch them. They're generally 25 to 40 pounders on a shrimp boat wreck. Mm -hmm. And the they never, none of them have ever had it. Um, but I've just seen the pictures. That's the first one I've actually seen it. And actually got to touch it. That was really cool. It's like uh, rubber. Yeah, it was like a, a jellyfish antenna or something. That is some good sashimi. See the streamers on this one yeah. still? They get real big, they lose those, you know? Uh huh. That's beautiful. Look at that, that color, it's just incredible. If that was Portuguese Man of War, I'd be screaming! Yeah. It's so... <laughs> oh, beautiful fish. I mean, just the shape of their Crazy. body make them a great fish to catch on spinning tackle. Because yeah. they can lay that head down and roll into the current just like a big bull dolphin and use their uh, body shape to their advantage. And that one, that one pressed you that, that the choice of tackle for sure. And, and the other thing is, is action brings action. That's, that's my deal. So as we're waiting on that king bite, I'm constantly dropping something to the bottom. Trying to catch a yellowtail, that's trying not, to catch a ADD. grouper. No, 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 that's not ADD. <laughs> that's that's just action brings action, man. And so, uh, you know, if, as long as you can keep fish feeding and spitting stuff up and, and things happening, you're going to have a lot better action on top. You're drawing those fish up. Uh, marking birds with radar back in the day with the Farunos that we all had uh, was uh, definitely a um, a uh, mystery science. Some guys had it and some guys didn't. I mean, same exact equipment, some guys were burning the birds. And uh, you know, it just was a matter of, I guess, wattage, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But uh, some guys got it and some guys didn't. I didn't until I got the new Simrad equipment um, and a few simple lessons. Uh, it actually changed the st my style of fishing forever. With a quick little uh, instruction from someone actually in the know, an actual tuna fisherman, First thing you gotta do is you gotta scrap all the auto programs. You gotta go to manual, and that's and that's not difficult to do. It's just a matter of one switch on these, and then it's a matter of setting your gain as high as possible, and then setting your uh, C, C clutter as low as possible. Then slowly and surely bringing them both together until uh, you're actually seeing birds five to seven miles away, which is difficult to understand sitting at the dock or even on the water. You can't see that bird at seven miles, but after you. Uh, fish with somebody who has faith that that is a bird, you actually start to figure it out on your own and then it's a matter of just going to that spot. Even if it takes 15, 20, 30 minutes, just knowing that that fuel's not wasted is actually uh, money in the bank. Because once you get there, 15 minutes later, on faith, there's the birds working the school of dolphin and your, your score for the day starts earlier in the day and quicker in the day. The main control knob on the Simrad is right here, and uh, there's three settings, gain, seat clutter, and rain clutter. Uh, it's a matter of just touching the master dial, hitting set, and there you are. You're, you're setting your seat clutter. Boom. You're setting your rain clutter. Boom. You're setting your gain. Then it's just a matter of spinning the knob up and down. Uh, uh, we're off of auto feature, so now I'm setting my gain all the way up to uh, 100. It's we're gonna black out my screen. And what I wanna do now, is I'm gonna slowly dial it back until I have clear road ahead in a tight circle from center. Here it comes. Starting to clean up, staying really clear on the outside edge of it. Because what we're doing is we're focusing this beam out forward of us. We're not looking for ships anymore. And as it starts to dial in here, when I end up right about here, my game it's almost at two thirds. And now I'm just marking birds. I'm, I'll, I'll mark little boats too, but uh, that's not what I'm after. I'm looking for the birds, and they're gonna pop in. Here's a set right ahead of us at about two and a half miles. They're, they're gonna be, they're gonna come and go. That's even better because they're actually flying up and down off the surface of water. That actually is what you want. You want to find a hard mark and then have that mark disappear. That just lets you know for sure that the birds are flying up and down on the water, chasing a flying fish and following a nice school of dolphin around. Oh boy, he wants to bite me. <laughs> I know no. why they don't let these things go. Yeah, they're hard to let. Let me tell you something. That's not an easy fish to let go. Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. By Seaguar, 
always the best fishing line. And by Marathon, King Sailfish Mounts, Spear One Charters, and Freybill Fishing Gear. Got it. Let him grow up. You think you make it to the bottom? He might, we try. <laughs> Down he goes. Oh boy, he wants to bite me. <laughs> I know yeah. I did. don't let these things go. Okay. Yeah, they're hard to let. Let me tell you something. That's not an easy fish to let go. Are you just being stubborn or are you clear? I don't know. I'll get something. <laughs> Wait and see if it comes out. We always say, you know, the sharp is a razor blade. It might be sharper. No. They can cut you from three inches away or even without even knowing it. It's an amazing, I mean, I, that, that tooth is, is amazing. There's no doubt. I mean, I see people grab them at the dock when they're dead. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> They'll cut you just as bad when they're dead. I don't like touching them. Mm-mm. Like you said, they're a hard fish to release. <laughs> All right, they keep getting five pounds bigger. Got to put it back out again. He's definitely a little frantic. <laughs> He's saying right now, there he is. 